Hi, I'm Dr. Jim Hoven, your host of the Difference Makers podcast. This is a place where people come together that are making a difference for those who want to make a difference. And that's you. We're bringing thought leaders together in a sense of fusion where ideas and concepts and personalities are all driven together into one place at one time. And this is no different. In this episode, you're going to see cool things from cool people making a difference. Welcome to the Difference Makers Podcast. I'm Dr. Joseph Ramos. Yes, I am a real medical doctor and a real attorney. I know you hear all the time, I'm a doctor, I'm an attorney, uh, but I always have to point that out because I do happily practice both professions and we frequently get callers in here to our uh, both businesses that don't think I do one or the other, but I do do both. Uh, today though, I'm here at Ramos Law and I'm gonna talk to you about a medical topic and it's something I'm very excited about it's been very popular now for a while in the news, but it's really time for some clarifications, and that is semaglutide, or as many people know it, Ozempic or Wagovi. Um, it's all over the place, and so today I'm gonna clarify a bunch of things for you. Uh, really saying all three is saying the same. The base product is semaglutide, and so that's how I'm going to refer to it. Uh, this is the injectable weight loss medication that's changing America. You hear about it on the news um, just about everywhere. I'm gonna do my very best to uh, push Dr. Jim Hoven out of the spotlight today, but I acknowledge that those are big, big shoes to fill. Uh, don't worry though, Dr. Hoven will be back. Uh, he and I are gonna start kind of sharing the duties on the Difference Makers podcast and hopefully even get to do some of these together. And I promise to be as passionate and as informative as Dr. Hoven is, and I hope I don't let you down. Please feel free to tell me in your comments if I do though. Uh, now, let's get let's get back to this here. Semaglutide, again, Ozempic or Wagovi as it's uh, known in the brand names is really the rage across the United States. There's all kinds of people you may have bumped into like I have, uh, where you see someone that you haven't seen in a long time and they just look great. All of a sudden they've dumped all of this weight. I'm sure you've heard of someone taking it if you haven't experienced seeing the effects in person and maybe even you're taking it. Uh, in either case, I think the reason you're gonna find today's episode informative is I'm gonna explain several things to you. I'm gonna explain to you, first of all, what is semaglutide? What are all these medicines? Uh, how did they come about? A little background behind them. Why are they effective? And uh, what should you be concerned about or what should you know if you're either taking this medication or you decide to take it or you have a family member taking it? And then it, this seems to be the common question that I'm getting a lot now in our medical practice is, hey, how long do I have to be on this? And if I go off of it, am I, am I going to gain my weight back? Uh, that seems to be just a really common question nowadays. So uh, without further ado, let's, uh, let's jump in. Uh, first, what is semaglutide? Again, I'm not going to use the brand names Ozempic or Wagovi, um, but it is essentially saying the same thing. Semaglutide came about its original purpose when it was very first developed. It was actually uh, to be a treatment for type 2 diabetes. The uh, medication was basically approved in 2021. Now, there was a version of this medication approved in 2014 by the Food and Drug Administration, but really semaglutide or Ozempic are the more popular ones that really kind of were the next step up were approved in 2021 by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. And they really started getting popular and marketed a lot. And in 2022, they exploded. And now, of course, we've been seeing all these uh, skinny people as a result. Uh, initially, uh, as a diabetes medication, the reason it was prescribed was because patients, it was supposed to uh, stimulate the pancreas to help with the biological effects of, of glucose and have better utility of glucose. And in the process, also seem to suppress appetites. And so the, the idea in a diabetic person is if you get better utilization of your sugars, and if you don't take in as many sugars, you of course would improve your diabetes. What began to happen then was all of these people started losing weight. You see a lot of type two diabetics um, are overweight. Part of the reason is, is that a lot of the insulin receptors in our body are kind of centralized. And a lot of type two diabetics carry a lot of their weight in the center portions of their body. The idea was that uh, as they started to lose weight, the insulin receptors would become freer and would utilize glucose better. And you've probably seen this, many type two diabetics, they lose weight and what happens? Their diabetes goes away. So uh, they start treating these diabetics uh, with it. They started losing incredible amounts of weight. Then they no longer had type two diabetes. 
And they said, wow, this might actually be a better weight loss medication than anything else. And, uh, and there, there became the, the popularity of it. So now we know it as a, as a weight loss medication. So let's talk about how it works. Semaglutide is a GLP-1 receptor agonist. Now, what does all that jargon mean? GLP means glucagon-like peptide. The one, just a type of receptor where it goes and where it agonizes, which means that it stimulates. So GLP-1 agonist, glucagon-like peptide agonist. What glucagon-like peptides are really hormones? Um, in, in our body, most everything works based on hormones. And, and I think that we all know that. It doesn't matter if we're talking the sex hormones like estrogen and testosterone or thyroid hormones like thyroid stimulating hormone or adrenal corticotropic hormone for adrenal glands. The whole body is essentially hormones and, and how it functions is based on hormones. And your body recognizes when it needs something and the brain sends a signal typically down to your, to your pituitary. The pituitary sends it down to the next place it needs to go and tells it to make it. So for example, you see me pointing in the area of my pituitary kind of directly back between your eyes. Uh, and then it's sending a message to your thyroid. Thyroid can send a message down to your testes to make um, you know, more hormones. It can send a message to your ovaries. It can send a message to your adrenals. And so really the pituitary is this messenger that is told what to do based on the brain. And in the, in the brain, we get these messages when our body wants us to have something or not have something. So for example, if you get a sensation of hunger, and this is where the glucagon-like peptide comes in, your brain will say, hey, we need you know, uh, more food or we need less food if you're hungry or not hungry. The way glucagon-like peptide works is it's actually released by your liver and it usually slows down your system when you've had enough food. So, so here, this, let me say this again. Glucagon-like peptide, GLP-1, where semaglutide works, its mechanism of action, is it tells your body that it's full and you don't need any more food. So how it does this is, number one, there's an area in the brain, a satiety center, that, uh, that tells us, eh, I'm not that hungry, or hey, I'm really hungry. There's also an area in our stomach. When your stomach feels full, you don't feel like eating a lot, you, your, your hunger drive goes down. When your intestines don't move as quickly, when they don't propel things along as fast, you also aren't as hungry. So brain, stomach, intestines. And what glucagon-like peptide does is it tells all of them, hey, you're good. So the brain stops telling you you're hungry, your stomach fills full so you don't wanna eat any, and your intestines don't move along and propel things along, so you feel fine. You, you don't feel a need to eat. That's what that peptide does. It works on all of those areas. So what we found out is that if we could mimic this hormone, we could make people think they had all of those effects. Now, let's stop for a minute and think about this hormone. How complex is it? Actually, not very complex at all. Hormones are made up of amino acids. We've all heard of amino acids. Once you figure out the sequence of amino acids in a hormone, you can make the body mimic it. You just plug a bunch of amino acids together. They become then the messenger to the body to tell it uh, how the hormone acted when you don't have the hormone. So when they came up with semaglutide, what they realized were they were mimicking the hormone glucagon-like peptide by sticking together these amino acids and tricking the body so that it wasn't hungry any longer. And, and that, was, that was, is the mechanism of action of it, and that's how it works. Now, here's some of the great things that then, that then come out of that. Number one, if you're not eating a lot, obviously you don't get any the, the uh, calories you would otherwise get, and you would lose weight. The other thing is if you're using your glucose better, if I make your pancreas function a little better, then you t uptake your glucose better, you also lose weight. So between these, all these effects, brain, stomach, uh, intestines and the biology of it, semaglutide mimics a hormone that makes you lose weight. Now, I don't think I did a great job of explaining that, but I hope you get the, the big picture, the 10,000 foot picture, that it's simply semaglutide acts like a hormone and it's a hormone that works in, in all the right ways so that we don't take in as much and whatever we do take in, we use better. Now, here's the next part about uh, semaglutide that's important to know. How long does it take for it to work? So uh, you may or may not have heard, it's an injection. 
a very small insulin-like syringe that you put an injection in your stomach. We use very, very small amounts of the medication. And it can start as low as like uh, 0.25 milligrams. It can go as high as 2.5 milligrams. Uh, it, it, it's not like you take a shot and you immediately start losing weight. The reason is, is this. There's some, there's some basic science that I want to explain about weight loss. We really use calories in our body by burning. First, the easiest thing we have to burn for energy is sugar, glucose. The second thing that we have to burn is glycogen. Glycogen is just stores of sugar. It's basic sugars that have been um, attached together and they're stored in different organs. And so first our body, when we need energy, if I'm sitting here right now and if I haven't eaten, I'll be burning up all my little simple sugars. The minute I go through my simple sugars, I start breaking down glycogen. That's the, the chains of sugars. I start breaking those down. The minute I'm out of glucose, I'm out of glycogen, then I start burning fats and proteins. So it takes a little bit before you actually start burning fat. You actually have to get through all of those other stores that our body has. So uh, what happens with, with um, semaglutide and why it takes typically several weeks to work is, is that hormones go into the body and out of the body very quickly, but they slowly will creep up their half-life. That's the time for one half of it to be removed. You, you put it in, you remove half of it. That's half-life. If you put in more, you remove half of it while well, it stacks on the prior half. If you put in more and you remove half of it, stacks on the prior half. And in order to stack that up safely with proper dosing, you're looking usually at anywhere from two to four weeks before you start getting the full effect. At that level, you can almost say you've filled your uh, GLP-1 tank, meaning that hormone, you filled that tank. Now, once you've filled that tank and you're not as hungry anymore, you're not taking in as much anymore, and you're burning what you had in there easier now, you can see where all of a sudden the weight then starts to fall off. You're kind of always in that cycle where you've cleared out all your sugars, you've cleared out all your glycogen, and now you're burning fat and protein, fat and protein, fat and protein, and it keeps you in that zone. Now that actually leads to one of the things that people with taking semaglutide need to watch for. It's very important, I believe, when you're on a medication like this that's causing weight loss, that you're also doing in bodies or body composition measurements. The reason is, is that if you're, if you're burning fat, that's good. But if you're burning protein, what's that? That's muscle. That's bad. We don't want to lose muscle. Remember that muscle actually is the biggest driver in our body of the amount of calories that we use while we're at rest. So muscle and protein in our body is good because it helps us burn off calories. So if we're losing fat, good, but if we're losing protein and muscle, not so good. So it's important when you're on something like semaglutide that you're also getting some activity in. The activity is critical because a little bit of activity will keep the muscles firing and will keep them heavy. Um, I'm sorry, will keep them active and, and will keep their tone is what I should say, which forces you actually to burn more of the fat off than the loss of protein. So you'll selectively start burning the fat and maintain more of your muscle mass. Now, it's not unusual to, lo to lose a little muscle mass when you're on semaglutide, but uh, we want to obviously prefer preferably lose the fat and, uh, and such. And so this is one of the reasons why I think that medically managed um, semaglutide programs are absolutely the best. Uh, I think that this has been treated a little bit too much just like, hey, everybody can take it and you're going to lose weight. And I'm going to go into in a minute some, some side effects and some concerns with that. The medical aspects of this are very important for managing. Well, what weight are you losing? Are you losing good weight? Are you losing bad weight? Because remember, you can, you can lose weight that you don't want to lose if you're losing muscle mass. Now, at this point, it's gotten a little deep. Uh, and so I'm going to stop for a minute. And I'm going to share a pop culture fact with you that Anita Robinson, our social media specialist, uh, oops, actually told me. Now, you guys know, well, maybe you don't know, I'm not a real pop savvy type of guy. My wife makes fun of me because she says, I don't know the difference between Star Trek and Star Wars. <laughs> and so I'm not a real, a real good pop culture guy. I didn't grow up with a lot of television, and so I'm still learning. And, and Anita tells me that uh, uh, a fun pop culture fact is that the, the Real Housewives have actually been accused of using semaglutide or Ozempic, they say, uh, and that uh, because they're all losing weight, and they're all getting skinny, and they're all blaming each other for using this. And this actually in increased curiosity around the drug. I believe that. 
And I'll tell you this, uh, it also incre increases curiosity around this, this particular medication when you see so many people who are having their lives changed because you see them, they literally have just, they've shed so much weight. Um, and again, I'm, I'm sure you've all, you've all witnessed that. That's what makes it popular. You know, uh, the semaglutide, they actually did a study, one of the more powerful studies out there. They studied over 2,000 people and they put one part of the group on diet and exercise. Now, as a doctor, I can't tell how many times I've told people, you wanna lose weight, diet and exercise, burn more than you take in and you'll lose weight. Uh, and so they did that. They used the standard doctor line and they, they told part of these 2,000 people that, diet and exercise, diet and exercise. They took the other 2,000 people and they, or, or the other part of the group, probably 1,000 split in half, it's okay, whenever you do diet and exercise like they're doing, but we're gonna add this medication, the semaglutide, this little bitty injection in your belly uh, once a week. Uh, the people who did the diet and exercise lost about 3% of their weight over the course of the study, which was about four months, if I recall right, may have been a six month study. The people that added the semaglutide with it lost 15 to 20% of their weight. So literally five to seven times as much weight so that's when it really became clear uh, that when the research really began to show that this is super, super effective. Now, I said a minute ago that I also wanted to talk to you about some of the risks associated with this. And I said that I wanted to make sure that you understood that this is a medicine and, and with any medicine, there are adverse effects. There are dangerous aspects. And here are a few of those. And if you are considering taking this medicine or if you have a family member taking this medicine and they're just getting it from a health spa or they're ordering it online, I would strongly encourage you to like record right where we are right now on the podcast and share this with them. This is critical. First of all, I told you that the semaglutide helps us uptake sugars by making our pancreas work more effectively. Well, one of the complications of semaglutide used inappropriately or discontinued inappropriately or brought on too rapidly is that it can cause pancreatitis. Pancreatitis is an inflammation of your pancreas, of that, of that organ in our body that's responsible for secreting insulin, that organ that's responsible for uptaking sugars. And it's also a very, very deadly organ if it gets inflamed. Um, pancreatitis, every year, thousands of people die of. And while it seems like the simplest thing, it can happen. So th this medicine can't be taken lightly because of that organ that it acts on. The second thing is, you remember as I told you that part of the mechanism of action was it slowed our bowel movement and that helped us kind of feel full. Remember I told you it slowed some of the stomach motility that makes us feel full and it hits those satiety centers in the brain that says, hey, you don't need any food. Well, that can be good, but could also be bad. Inappropriately dosed, inappropriately monitored. Um, there have been cases of bowel obstruction from semaglutide. What is that? That is when basically your, your bowel slow down so much that they stop moving and then everything starts to back up. If that gets severe enough, it can require a surgery. And if you don't have a surgery done fast enough with certain bowel obstructions, it can actually kill your intestines. And you've probably seen someone with a bag on their side where their, their fecal matter is moving out into the bag on their side. It can result in, in that type of a surgery if you end up with an obstruction that doesn't move along. Now, it's called an ileus. The fortunate thing about that is that is rare. But it happens, and again, that's the, why medical management is important. Another uh, complication that they've seen from the semaglutide is retinal detachment. Uh, the retina, of course, is in the back part of the eye, and if that, uh, you know, our light comes in and goes and hits our retina, refracts, and it's, it was, it's, it's important for our vision. Without a retina, you can't see. And uh, this area of our eye has started to detach, and they have these increased uh, rate of retinal detachments in people. And they said, why is that happening? And people taking semaglutide. And what they found was is that the medicine was so effective in removing sugars from the system that it actually changed the, the osmolarity or osmolality of our fluids. All that is is like when you have a bunch of solids in fluid or if you don't have a bunch of solids in fluid, fluid wants to move to an area where there are more solids. And if you remove a bunch of solids, fluid moves. And if the fluid moved from the back of the eye because we were pulling so much sugar out of the system, the retina could actually detach. And that was happening in people who were having too rapid of, of medication increases or too rapid of shifts in their uh, sugar changing and decreasing. So again, while it had great effects, for example, in those type two, di type two diabetics and great effects in people for weight loss, 
if not managed appropriately, it can be very dangerous. And so that is why we we really had to be careful and we had to watch closely, uh, you know, people's eyes, your vision. Imagine losing your vision for life just over um, not appropriately managing this. Um, some other quick things, um, uh, it, they found some increased risks of certain in certain types of people that have multiple endocrine neoplasia. That's a particular type of cancer where people get cancers of their glands and people who have multiple endocrine neoplasia, <laughs> multiple endocrine neoplasia, uh, MEN syndrome basically, uh, can get increased risks of thyroid uh, cancer. Rare, but it happens. Now, in, in wrapping up here, um, how accessible is semaglutide? It's very accessible. Unfortunately, too accessible. You can get it from just about anywhere, but it doesn't tell you what the quality is that you're getting. It doesn't tell you the medical management you're getting. And the people who are, who are giving this out need to know all of these things above that I've talked about. This is a medicine. Be careful. Can it be good? Yes. Can it be great? Yes. But don't put a price on your life for weight loss without understanding safety. Uh, remember, there are benefits, but remember there are also risks. And we weigh those. I, as a medical provider, I weigh those in everybody I prescribe it to. Last thing, if you know somebody who is on semaglutide and it's not working, there are a couple reasons why. I've heard some people say, well, it just doesn't work for me. Well, not exactly. Uh, remember that genetics do affect hormones in our body. Some people may already have the genetics where they have plenty of that GLP-1 that the semaglutide acts like. They may have plenty of that already. So it may actually take a higher dose for them to get any effect. That's one thing. They've also come out now, there's another hormone called GIP. That's glucagon insulinotropic polypeptide. You don't remember that, it's called GIP. They've now come out with medicines like tirzepatide. That's in some of the newer medicines that you're hearing about, and it affects both of those hormones. So if someone has plenty of GLP-1, then you affect their GIP, and you can actually get them losing weight. Again, why medical management is important. So in people who, who semaglutide doesn't work for, I typically see a couple things. I see that their genetics are such that the hormone effect of it is just not good enough in them, and they actually need one of the, uh, I call them one-off versions, where we affect two of the hormones. And that's an appropriate change so they're not wasting their money on it not working. Another uh, person that I see not working on are people who um, either have an inadequate dose or their dosing is not advanced in the right way for their body habitus. Remember that no two of us are the same. We all have different, um, you know, muscle and fat components, different uh, weights to begin with. And that's a medical management issue. Uh, and, 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 and again, I, I really like the, uh, looking at to see if semaglutide is not going to work. And again, that's like Ozempic or Wagovi, uh, if that didn't work in somebody. I looked at, like to look at some of those newer medications, the tirzepatide classification, which is like Zepbound or Manjaro. Those are the ones that affect the two hormones. I hope that helps. I know I talked a lot, um, talked pretty fast, got pretty deep in some of the science parts of it. But I think it's important to really understand this medicine. I hope that uh, in the end you... you Know that this could help you with you know 15 to 20 percent of your weight loss, uh, body weight loss of uh, as a percentage. Um, the reality is, if you do stop it, remember that your body will return to normal. Your GLP-1 levels will return uh, to your own bodies instead of this mimicking one, and you could put the weight back on. That's why it's important along the way to remember uh, the diet and exercise portions because those will help you to maintain once you once you go off of the medication. So I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, please uh, send them in. Always happy uh, to answer those questions. In fact, I enjoy the questions. It challenges me to get better as a provider and to help my patients better. I hope you enjoyed today's conversation. Again, as I said, when I ended our last um, uh, talk that I did, if you enjoyed today's episode, please leave us a five-star review. I know it always sounds kind of corny saying that, but reviews do help. They get other people to watch. And the whole goal is, is if this is helpful, we want to help others. It makes the world a better place. It makes our lives richer and, and your reviews matter in that way. Uh, your feedback is, is incredibly valuable. If there are topics you want me to talk about, please let me know. We would not be where we are today uh, in my medical practice or my law practice if it wasn't uh, for viewers and people like you that were uh, chiming in and helping out and giving us direction. 
uh, in doing so, while you're at it, please follow us on social media. We have all the links in our show notes every single time, and we really encourage it. We love it when you get involved with that. That being said, thanks again for joining us today. And as Dr. Jim Hoven always says, go be a difference maker, making a difference. Mm-hmm.